to file ordinary returns. Now, the name ordinary is not official, uh, but what we mean here is that uh, it does not involve too much. It's only the income and the tax period, because there are times where we have others with insurance relief, others with mortgages. I mean, those have their own dynamics. But in this case, we are only filing because you have an income and you have some tax to declare. And therefore, that is what we mean by ordinary return. Now, in this case, you should have your P9 at hand because that is a summary of your income throughout the year and it will help you to file returns. We could have used videos done 2019, 2018 and going back, but because of the pandemic, there was a change in the tax laws from the fourth month going on to the twelfth month. And therefore, there is a small change in how we go about the process of filing and that is what prompted us to do another video in order to help you file your returns with more ease. And therefore, get your, and therefore, get your P9 ready and let us head over to file ordinary returns. To the page itax.kra.go.ke, you have a section to enter your PIN, password, and be able to log into your account. Therefore, enter your PIN, continue, enter your password, go through the security stamp question 64 minus 9, 64 minus 9. You can clearly see it's 55, and therefore the result is typed in this box 55. And click login. Once you have been able to log in, we want to file returns, ordinary returns. We call it ordinary. We have said because it doesn't involve too much. It's only the gross income, perhaps some house allowance, pension contribution, and all the way just giving your tax to the government, declaring that this is how much I have remitted to the government through the payroll to the government. Now, there are several sections where we can get the links that will lead us to the section where we will get the portal for filing returns. Well, we have on this section returns, or you can take the e-returns. So whichever is easier for you, placing the pointer over returns and clicking file return, or coming over to e-returns and clicking e-returns, whichever works for you. Um, so which one should I take? The old way? The, uh, all right. Uh, file return. Let me take this. File return. Once that is done, it will ask you for your tax obligation. Tax obligation, resident individual. Yes, this applies for many, 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 many citizens. It cuts across resident individual. You're a resident of Kenya and you are an individual. Resident individual, once that has been selected, kindly remember never to leave it blank because it is a mandatory field. Therefore, next, you will receive instructions on what you need to do in order to proceed to download the Excel sheet or the ODS return form that will be helpful in filling the information needed to be uploaded into the system. Now click on one of the links below to download the return form. The links are right here. The links are right here. This is where you get the, 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 the return form. Well, uh, for this case, we will use Excel. There is an instance where you can use ODS. Let's go for Excel. Click um, on this other section. We'll come back later to progress. But for now, we need the Excel, Excel sheet that we will fill in the information and then we proceed over to upload it later after it has been filled. Therefore, click here to get the download. It will come as a zipped file. You need a software to help open a zipped file, whether through the Windows straight or through software that has been built specifically to open zipped file. Whichever way, ensure that you can see the IT1 individual resident return. Yeah, return, return, SXLS. Open. Once you have the Excel sheet open, what you need to do is to enable 
the content. By enabling the content, it means that you are enabling the formulas and you're making the Excel sheet usable. Therefore, the macros have been disabled. Um, all you need to do is to click Enable Content and uh, the content will be enabled. There's a communication that please do not cut and paste any values in the workbook. That's okay. We will ensure that all the values have been typed. All right, let's get the personal identification number. The personal identification number is found in the P9, and therefore, in the section in the P9, you'll be able to see your personal identification number it begins with an A. Ensure that it's on caps lock, it's on capital letters as you take it. A begins with an A. Once that has been entered correctly, the type of return in this case is original because we are filing for the first time. Amended is used in a situation where you have already sent the information into the system. It has given you a receipt in return, but you have realized that there is a mistake that was made in the computation. And therefore, you have a chance of filing an amended return. For this case, since it's the first time, we are taking original. Return period is from the first of January 2020 to the last day of January for the last to the last day of to the last day of December 2020. The return period is from the first of January 2020. You click on return period two, you realize that goes back to the return period form please click, click twice to the 31st of december 2020 yes we have said that in the year 2021 we are filing returns for the year 2020 right allow the excel sheet to work so that it can open all the relevant sheets for you that you may be able to fill in the information from the p9 now there are a few other basic information that you need to give but remember we say this is ordinary and therefore it means that most of this section will remain as no do you have any other income other than employment no if it's yes for you it means that uh, it will have other dynamics on how to fill but in this case it's no do you have partnership income no do you have estate trust income no has your employer provided you with a car no do you have a mortgage no a tutorial has been done on how to file returns in an event where you have a mortgage. Do you have a home ownership saving plan? It's no, it's no. Do you have a life insurance policy? No. A tutorial has also been done on how to go about the filing in a situation where you have a life insurance policy. Do you have a commercial vehicle? No. Do you earn any income from a foreign country? No. Have you been issued the exemption certificate for disability? Now we must appreciate the government because in an event where someone has a disability, they are exempted from paying taxes, which is a good thing. Do you want to declare wife income? No. This section is complete. You can see that all the other sections have been grayed out and therefore all these other sections will be left blank. You have two options, scrolling all the way to the end of the document or simply clicking on the next tab. Whichever works best for you, kindly take it. Therefore, whether clicking next or while at basic information, you click on the tab, on the next tab, it will always take you to the next tab. Now, this section ensure that you can see the first, first cell. Cell A3 is always the first and therefore ensure that you're always on A3. There are times where the Excel sheet comes with section A3 hidden and therefore, you need to move it further and ensure more to the left and ensure that you can see cell A3. Now, on this section, you'll be required to fill the PIN of the employer. PIN of the employer begins with P, name of the employer, back to the P9 to get the gross pay. In the first section for the P9, we can see the gross pay. In this section, 
we are on in this case we are taking the total gross pay 9330849 9330.84 click on the next tab 9330.84 allowances and benefits from employment other than car and housing benefits and cash is on this section there's nothing therefore do not leave the section blank there's nothing indicate with a zero net value of housing the net value of housing is on this section the value of quarters net value of housing in this case is also zero because there's nothing on this section pension if in excess of 300,000 now the defined pension contribution is also seen on this section the defined pension contribution is not more than 300,000 and therefore if it's not more than 300,000 write the actual right indicate with a zero if it's more if it's not more than 300,000 indicate with a zero but if it is more than 300,000 write how much was contributed in full if it's 400 or 500 or 600 write the entire amount on this section and therefore total employment income is 933 084 total employment income 933084 and therefore it means we are progressing well this is what has changed compared to the previous years in this case you will be required to fill the, the income between january and march and the pension between january and march this is because the tax laws changed from april to december in order to cushion the citizens from the effects of the pandemic Therefore, we will come to this section. My this is, the payroll here was generous to give a summary of January to March income, January to March pension, April to December income, and April to December pension. And therefore, January to March income is simply the income from January to March, and therefore, it is a total of january february and march 699888 times 3 we have the summary right here 209664 209664 january to march pension this is the pension that was contributed between january february and march the summary is right here 3240 in case you do not have such a summary it is easy add the total employment income for the first three months which will give you from january to march and then add the next nine months which gives you from april to december april to december 723 420 723 420 723 420 april to december pension april to december pension 97 20 97 20 well since this is an excel sheet the formulas are inbuilt if you click on this section hold control and click on this section you can clearly see the totals the totals 933084 therefore it agrees with the total employment income therefore it means we have done it well and we can progress and we can progress remember we have said that ensure you can see the first cell a3 because the time where because at times where the cell a3 is hidden therefore you need to move until you can see it pin of employer pick what has been entered name of employer taxable salary the taxable salary is found on this section right here the taxable salary is the total employment income minus the defined pension contribution to get the taxable salary and therefore the government is trying to say that let us continue giving out pension because by giving out more pension we have tax reliefs up to a limit of 300,000 now the taxable Salary is 920, 124. 
9 20 1 24 9 20 1 24 tax payable on taxable salary tax payable on taxable salary is 162 162 642 642 162 642 amount of tax deducted the amount of tax deducted which is pay pay as you earn 136 818 136 818 now in order for you to check for accuracy the amount of tax payable or refundable the figure that is shown here should be equal to the personal relief for the year 25 8 24 25 8 24 let us progress now on qit payments credits uh, does not apply for many with employment income because rarely a tax is paid in advance when you have employment income let us now move to the final section t tax computation we're almost done you'll be required to enter the defined pension contribution under SR number 11.1. .1. The defined pension contribution is also found on your P9. Defined pension contribution 12,960. 12,960. Once that is done, you'll also be required to enter the personal relief for the year. Personal relief 25,824. 25,824. Allow the Excel sheet to work, and once that is done, a figure will be shown down here. Now, the ideal is a 0 0.00, not negative 0 0.1, not even positive 0 0.1. But uh, because of the variation in income through the year, many times we fail to get a balance of this section. Now, once that is done, look at the figure that appears on this section. If it's a negative, it means that you have overpaid tax. If it is positive, it means that you have underpaid tax. If it's positive, it means that you need to pay KRA. If it's negative, it means KRA needs to pay you. In other words, if it's negative, it's a refund, and if it's a positive, it's a tax due. Well, if you have a positive figure on this section, remember, do not proceed with filing your returns. Consult the payroll and tell them I have an issue because I have some tax due. Could that be true? And I'm sure you will get help. If in case you have a negative, well, no harm. It means the government needs to give you a refund. But well, it's not a refund because it's all about computation issues. Once that is done, click on validate in the sheet click ok to see the error now the error is that i need to find i need to fill in the bank details in order for the refund to be given because you remember we had a negative 4000 plus yes now click on the sections that are active let's begin with the bank name uh, most preferably well you can fill in the bank but i prefer m payment because it's easy to remember the details m payment the branch we have Airtel Money, Elma and Pesa, Orange Money, others, Ucash. Select whichever suits you. The city. Account holder's name. And account holder's number. account holders number once that is done return to the section t tax computation and click validate remember to only click once do not click too many times because it will cause the excel sheet to hang and have problems while generating the zip file give it a moment to work and it will complete in a moment After some time, message come back sheet already uploaded. Do you want to generate upload? Yes. 
techno equipment for OK. Return to the iTax portal, choose File, under Documents, we can see that the, the zipped file is right here. Choose the document, click on Open. The return period is from 1st of January 2020 to the 31st of December 2020. Once the file has been uploaded, click I agree to the terms and conditions and submit. Do you want to upload the form? Okay. There you go. Well, it's done.